there's, there's good news and there's bad news. The bad news is that it sounds bad. The good news is that it's very easy to fix and you can potentially fix it zero cost, like absolutely zero cost. And I'm going to show you how. I guess before I can really start talking about the HEF, I need to tell you guys a little bit of a story here. And uh, this is me kind of owning up to something a little bit. So a friend of mine reached out to me on Discord and said, hey, I need a new affordable $60-ish closed back headphone. I don't want a gaming headset. I want a headphone for 60 something dollars. I'm like, okay, great. Sure. I'll, I'll start making you a list of recommendations, stuff that I know that I love. And as I go to my usual, like searching on Amazon and other sites of different uh, sales and whatever, I noticed that one headphone that was on a crazy sale, $120 headphone, half off for 60 bucks. Now, and that headphone was this, the Blonde B50. Come on. There it is. Yep, the Blonde B50. So yeah, I, I uh, saw this was on sale for half off for 60 bucks and I immediately recommended it. And the problem with that, the problem with me having done that is that I had not heard the Blonde B50s myself before making that recommendation. I recommend a product to someone without having heard that product myself. I don't do that, but I had heard such good things about this headphone that I, I guess felt it was a pretty confident recommendation, but because it was on sale, I jumped in it myself, got one and it just kind of reiterates to me how important it is to not recommend anything that you haven't had a chance to try out yourself. So we're going to talk about this headphone. We're going to review it, but we're also going to see maybe there's a way to fix it and maybe do a little bit of a redemption because I do feel bad for recommending it, but I assure you it's fixable. So that's what this is going to be. This is going to be me taking this headphone that has some problems and making it a headphone that is worth a recommendation. That's what we're going to be doing. And we're going to talk about it a little bit differently because I'm actually going to sit here with you. We're going to listen, not not like a whole listening session. I've, I've been listening to these for a good week and a half now. We're going to do some listening sessions together and I'm going to comment on sound while we're listening because I want to be able to accurately describe the headphone as it is stock versus how it changes when we do certain modifications. So let's talk about the Blonde B50s. I'll bring it up here again to show you all. So it's a pretty robust looking headphone. It's uh, definitely a lot of metal work done here, which is pretty nice. This is a headphone that got a lot of recognition when uh, Zeo's Pantera did a review on these. Now, I'm going to put this out here now that this is not in any way, shape, or form me doing a, uh, I don't know, any sort of like bashing against Zeo's. I am not interested in that discourse at all, okay? We're just going to talk about my experience with the headphone and go from there, okay? I don't want to be sending any trash towards Zeos, but you know, the, the, I, I think most people who bought this headphone were probably influenced by his review. I think that's fair to say, um, cause he gave it a huge glowing review and it is the reason why I recommended it and why I ended up buying one myself. And you know, it wasn't that big of a deal, 60 bucks, no big deal. I don't really care, but, uh, still it's just something to know. But again, no, no, no shade to Zeos, please. Okay. I'm not interested in that, but yeah, the blonde B50, it's a, it's a very robust metal construction. All of this is metal, 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 and then some leather bits. So it's got a lot of metal, a lot of decent materials are being used, at least on the surface here, on the surface here, lots of good, decent materials, the yoke does a little bit of movement here. Not very much, but you know what? It's enough 
to for it to kind of fit pretty snugly on the ear. It doesn't do really any swiveling, but as you can see, the headband is a little bit pliable, malleable, if you will. So you can kind of do a little bit of this, but I think overall it's enough general movement on the headphone for it to fit pretty comfortably on uh, most heads. It does have this headband here, which looks like it's straight off of like the Hi Feynman Sundara, um, but it looks exactly like that. I'm sure it's not. I'm sure it's just kind of maybe a knockoff of it. But yeah, you got your big headband here, steel spring, um, spring steel, <laughs> backwards, spring steel headband with a clicking adjustment that does have numbers on it. So you can see the different adjust sizes you have there. They're pretty clearly marked. And it does click. It's not the most satisfying click. It's a little mushy. I don't know if, if the mic's really picking that up or not, but it's a little... I don't know. It's a little mushy feeling. It's also not the most adjustment. I actually have to have these maxed out for them to be uh, large enough to fit on me. Uh, fortunately, the headband itself, the comfort strap, uh, it is a little bit malleable. It stretches a little bit, just a tiny bit of elastic, I think, underneath this faux leather. So it's able to also kind of stretch and fit to your head. The pads are really pretty nice. They're a nice, big, thick pad. It's a protein leather, but they're very soft. It's actually really, really soft. They're very nice pads. I have no problems with these pads at all. They're nice. On the inside, you have your R and your L. And then it terminates to a dual entry three and a half millimeter plug. And then the cable it comes with is not bad. Not a bad cable. I'll pull it out for you here. So here we go. Here's the cable. Like I said, just simple. Three and a half millimeter. Come on. There you go. Pretty simple. But, you know, looks nice. It does have R and L printed on there as well. It does have a little uh, like tightening adjustment for the Y of the cable, which you don't usually see on headphones, but you definitely see a lot on IEMs, which kind of makes sense because Blonde is mostly known for their IEMs. I have stuff like the, you know, Blonde BL3s and the BL5s that I love. I, I, I For the most part, I love Blonde IEMs. They're great. Hell, I even have, uh, where is it? Yeah. I even have the, the new uh, blonde uh, JoJo's from, again, Zio's. These are great. They're basically just, they're, they're blonde uh, BLO5s, but they're pink and cool. In fact, you know what? Screw it. We're just going to show those off because I'm probably not going to do a hot headphone highlight on these because I've already done the BLO5s, but we could take a look at them. They're beautiful. They're absolutely gorgeous. Check these out. Look at that. Come on. Yeah. There you go. I love it. I love the like pink, purple, silver aesthetic. It looks so cool. Yeah, these are the JoJo's. They're basically just the BLO5s, but with a different color scheme. These are great. I like these a lot. So Blonde makes good stuff, to be clear. They do make some pretty darn good stuff. So, but it kind of makes sense then that this cable kind of has a little bit of like IEM practices adopted to it, including this little adjustment here. Uh, then from the splitter, we get this nice kind of weaved cable. Look at that. A little hard to see, probably. I'll bring it up a little bit closer. It's just a du you know, dual cable weave, but it's nice. It is fabric braided, and it terminates to a right angle. Three and a half millimeter. Cool stuff. Nice, nice. Yeah, it's nice. It's a nice cable. I like the cable quite a bit. Doesn't really have any branding on it, like, at all, but it's fine. And the right angle is fine. I would, for my personal setup, prefer if it wasn't a right angle, but hey, I'll take it, whatever. It did not come with a quarter-inch adapter, which is a little odd, but I happen to have one that, like, per perfectly matches it anyway, so it's fine. So yeah, the cable's nice and the build is decent. Let's talk about the comfort really quick. They are actually pretty decent. Those pads are very, very soft 
And it's got this comfort strap, which helps a lot with the uh, top head comfort. I don't have much in terms of like hot spots or anything anywhere on my head or on my ears. They are pretty big and they are a little bit heavy because of all that metal. Um, they kind of almost look like airline, air traffic control headphones. They're kind of like got this retro hi-fi feel from like the 70s. It's kind of cool. I kind of like it. But it is notably pretty bulky. But as bulky as it is, and with all these metal, all this metal construction, it's not that bad in terms of weight. Uh, there is clamp force. The clamp force is not bad. It is pushing a lot of that fit is coming from it being on my ears. So, you know, it, it, it's real snug. I, I'm not worried about it falling off my head at all. It's super snug. So there's definitely enough clamp force that it feels like it's just sucked onto the side of my head. It's pretty comfortable, even with all that said. In terms of our comfort cloud system, I think I'll give these a solid seven. Seven clouds of comfort. I could wear these for quite a while. Um, the only really thing that holds them back is that there is a little bit of that weight. And over time, that weight does get a little, just a little bit fatiguing, but it'll take you a good hour or two before that starts to be a problem. So I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. They do get warm. Uh, these pads do not do a lot of, in terms of breathing. So they do kind of get a little bit warm, but other than that, good stuff. Seven clouds of comfort, good comfort sound. We're getting into it. We're going to talk about how this sounds as is, and we're going to actually do a little bit of listening together. And I'm going to explain to you what I'm hearing because it has some problems. Um, really uh, there's, there's good news and there's bad news with this headset. The bad news is that it sounds bad. It's not, it's not good. I said it has problems, but the fact of the matter is it sounds bad. The good news is that it's very easy to fix and you can potentially fix it zero cost, like absolutely zero cost. And I'm going to show you how, but first let's talk about how these sound stock. So I'm going to plug these in and then loop a couple songs. But while I do that, I'm going to explain a characteristic of the headphone that was alarming to me at first and something that kind of remained a core of one of the problems moving forward as I started listening to these when I first got them. And that characteristic is that putting them on your ears, because the way that they are constructed, they are a closed back headphone, okay? And they do do some noise isolation. They do block out the ambient sound around you. However, it doesn't block out all the sound. And I, I can only kind of guess and surmise as to why this is happening. But when I put these on, the very first thing I notice, okay? Yeah, my voice is muffled. The fan I cannot really hear anymore. I don't really hear the room anymore. So it's accomplishing that level of noise isolation, passive sound isolation. The problem is, it sounds like I'm wearing seashells on my ears. You know what I mean? I have this like washing sound of like the ocean right now. When you take a seashell, you put it against your ear and you kind of can hear the ocean, that kind of like sound. That's what's happening right now. That was alarming. That is not a good sign because it shouldn't do that. If it's doing that, if it's making that kind of oceany sound that means that i don't even know exactly what that means but it means something not not good <laughs> it means that something is not qu quite right with the way that this is built acoustically if this was built acoustically correctly i wouldn't be hearing this kind of clamshell sound so something immediately is a little off but we're gonna go ahead and go with it anyway so let's load up a couple tracks here. There's a lot of open space around your ears. No, not really. These these pads are pretty well sealed around my around my ears. This is a very closed design. Like I said, I can't hear anything in the room. And my voice is very, very muffled. But there is just this slight little humming. And perhaps it might have something to do with see if the camera picks this up. 
See those little holes up here? Right there. Yeah, the tops of the cups have these little holes. Not entirely sure what those are for, but that could be where the problem is. Let's load up a track real quick. And I'm going to kind of explain to you what I'm hearing. And yeah, you might even hear this too. I'll put this over here. Uh, this, this is, I'll load up a game soundtrack so maybe it won't get flagged. Then we can kind of listen to this together. And now we'll explain to you what I'm hearing. All right, Memories of Dust from the Near Automata soundtrack. Here we go. It's a little loud. This is fine so far. Mm. Okay, so right off the bat, this song starts out with a good a good amount of sub bass and bass hits, and with that with that that bongo there, that sounds pretty nice. Bass range is okay. It has this kind of real deep kind of uh, not really resonating bass. That it's just a very deep bass. You feel it really down low in your chest. Once that shamisen comes in, or that little whatever that is, a little guitar. Wait, wait. That. That little. That sounds incredibly shallow. That sounds like it's not just far away, but that it is. Like, buried under a bunch of pillows. It sounds incredibly muffled, incredibly veiled, and pushed far away. Shouldn't sound like that. So the vocal right now sounds okay. Vocals at this, at this point sound decent. But I can hear that something is struggling there's something in her frequency at the at the top end that's struggling a bit something sounds a little or, or a little not artificial but noisy like it's it's not quite hitting right okay Now her voice is starting to sound like it's blending in a little bit with that shamisen. It's starting to sound like it's, it's not a shamisen, I know, but you, I think you know what I'm talking about. It's starting to blend in there. It's starting to sound like it's like getting a little bit veiled, like it's getting a couple pillows put on top of her. Let's skip ahead a little bit. Here comes a crescendo. Okay, so again, when that bass comes in, that big bass drop, it sounds decent. It sounds pretty good, but it does sound a little bloated. And when that comes in, everything else underneath it sounds like it's being pushed down again. It sounds like it's being pushed down and pushed away and muffled. It's not a problem so much of the bass overwhelming it. Because the bass, it sounds like the bass is hitting where it's supposed to hit. The problem is that everything else is being tuned away from it. Things are getting uh, tuned away from where they're supposed to be. There's not any sort of control of frequency. Things are just going wherever they want. And it's it doesn't feel focused and tight and controlled. Right here, you hear that cello? Burr, 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 burr. That cello should be really, really well emphasized in this song. I can barely hear it. 
it's so muffled. It's so right now the mid range sounds like it is. It sounds like I'm listening to this song. This is this is an exaggeration, of course, but it sounds like I'm listening to this song through a tin can connected to a tin can through a string. It's it's extremely crushed. It's extremely metallic-y. It's extremely like messy and muddy. That should be really crystal clear, that cello, compared to the other instruments, but I could barely make a difference. And once those violins come in, the high violins, they're super crushed. They should be really sharp and bright and pretty sounding, the violins, but they're not. They sound like they're crushed down. They sound like they're uh, trying to break through something. Like the 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 high of the violins is trying to break through, but it can't. So it's like bouncing off of almost like this very thin layer of something. It's not great. Skip ahead a little bit. See right there, we have that little like shamisen thing. We have the violins, we have the cello, and we have the um, bass and bongos going on all at the same time. All of those should be individually recognizable. All of those should be very, very clear. All of those should be easily separated from each other. But right now... One, it, it almost sounds like I'm listening to mono sound. Like it, has, it barely sounds like stereo at all. It sounds like it's all just crushed and condensed right here. And just like maybe a little bit in my face and nothing is separated. Everything sounds like it's just kind of this muddy hodgepodge of sound and frequencies without anything being controlled, without anything being directed in any particular particular way. It just sounds like the frequencies are allowed to go wherever the hell they want and with no effort to try and channel anything. That vocal right there, when she comes back in, it's supposed to sound really powerful. It's supposed to be very emphasized. She's blending in with the rest of the instruments. It's all its all just muddy and shallow. Everything sounds extremely shallow except for the bass range. The bass range is a little a fairly present, but everything else extremely crunched and shallow. So let's go to a different track. Let's go to something that has a bit more uh, treble emphasis. That piano, it should be sharp and sparkly. It should be vibrant sounding. It is It is the top end of that piano, and, sh and it's being hit hard. It should be sharp. It's not. It is, again, crunched, condensed, and not even necessarily a triple roll-off. It's not even... It, I mean, it, it is. It is a roll-off, sure, but it is just being beaten down with a hammer it is the treble's trying to do something but it's not being allowed to it is being uh it's hitting a wall it sounds like it's hitting a wall before it gets to my ears it sounds like it is trying to produce this nice crisp sharp piano string but it's hitting a brick wall and then the sounds going around that brick wall maybe bouncing over a couple other walls before it actually gets to my ears that's gonna make sense later that's to make sense why I said that. That side disappointment. <laughs> <coughs> yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's keep going. So once again, that cello and those violins should be completely separate from each other and that cello should be rich and vibrant and heavy and 
robust sounding. It should it should sound like just this this velvety textured rumble. And those violins should be a complete contrast to that. It should be a huge dynamic between your your cello and the violin. Those violins right now should be beautiful, sparkly, sharp, and out there and in there, and a perfect blend of low and high. But they're meshed together right now. I'm hearing them crush together, mush together, like two pieces of silly putty smashed together and like rolled into a ball. And you can bear I could barely hear that piano anymore. So her voice is really, really high. And that part right there at the end. That is a, a very, very sharp note that she is hitting. It should be on some headphones. That's kind of like my sibilant test to see if headphones ever really hit sibilance is right there because it, it could be really, really hot. But again, she sounds like she's singing to me in a booth made of aluminum, aluminum, an aluminum contained booth. And I'm, I'm hearing her inside the booth. She sounds like she's so distorted and trapped when she should be like right there in front of me. And those and her voice should be just like, ah. Uh. But I'm getting nothing from it. I'm getting no energy from her. I'm getting no, no, um, I don't want to say richness. I hate saying rich. I just get no detail from her. She's so condensed. She's so crushed down. She's so trapped. She is trapped. She's been kidnapped. She's, she's isolated. She's trapped and locked into a room. We have to free her. We have to get her out of there. Because she has a beautiful voice, but we can't freaking hear it. And right here... God, I can't hear it at all. The piano is here. I know, I know this song very well. I know for a fact that there is a piano right here, and it's going do 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 do. I can't hear it. It's just gone. It's it's just covered in mud. It's been the piano has been taken outside. Someone took a hose, hose down the entire grass yard, and then just threw the piano into that mud. I can't even hear it. Okay, I think we get the point. It has problems. It has some major problems. It is, the bass range is okay. At least in kind of like your bass and even maybe a little bit of sub bass, but you're not getting much sub bass. It's an okay amount, but it only, the bass only works when the bass is by itself. Once the mid range comes in, the bass starts to get lost too. Your bass gets lost. Your mid range becomes so just condensed and mushed and covered in mud you can barely make out anything everything is just mushed together with no control and vocals become just this you know like like i said earlier this it sounds like i'm hearing them through a tin can connected to connected to string they sound artificial they sound metallic-y and they sound muddy and gross and it's not good it's not good. And the treble is so crushed down and so rolled off, it's almost like it doesn't have a treble range at all. That treble range is, it's trying. You can feel it trying to come out, but it's not. It's getting hit by something. It's not, it's getting diffused. The treble is getting diffused before it gets to you. So it, stock sound is not great. It's actually pretty bad. And that's why I felt so bad about making this recommendation. And I, I, I regret it. I regret that I recommended this headphone having not heard it myself.
But as I said at the beginning, fortunately, the good news is it is fixable and it is easy to do and it can be done for free. Okay? So let's do it. Let, let's let's fix these things because that like I said, that woman is trapped in a in a cell and we have to save her. So I'm gonna show you what you need to do to fix these. And you know, I don't know how many people actually own these, but I'm sure that those who do and who are disappointed in them, hey, I'm looking at you. I'm here to help. <laughs> these pads are really easy to come off. It's just they're they're connected with a twist. And the way to take them off, hold them in your, the easiest way to take them off for me is to hold them in my left hand, grab the side of the pad with my right hand, and then twist counterclockwise. They just pop right off. Okay. They're just connected with these little plastic prongs. And it's just a twist click connection. Okay. So now here's the driver. Have a look. This is where the kind of the build gets a little like, huh, okay. So the outside looks like it's pretty well made, but this kind of looks a little funky. This looks like it's just cheap, cheap plastic because, well, because it is. It is cheap, cheap plastic. Come on, camera. Don't focus on that part. Focus on the part I'm trying to show off. There you go. This is, this is a cheap plastic shield right here. And that's not necessarily a bad thing in and of itself, but I it was a little shocking to see this compared to the rest of the build. But there it is. Anyway, this plastic shield is connected with just these six screws. Okay, these little screws right here. They're just a Phillips screwdriver to take them off. And that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take my... Not sponsored, but I'm going to take my iFixit kit. And I'm going to grab my Phillips screwdriver. We're going to take off this plate. Okay. We're going to take off the driver plate. I'm going to let you know the driver is connected to this plate. So when we unscrew this, it's just going to kind of pop out and the driver's going to come with it. And you don't have to worry about it. It's not going to go flying around anywhere. So let's do that right now. I'm going to unscrew these just with my simple Phillips screwdriver here. Come on. Yep. Just a Phillips. And I'm going to unscrew these. It's just the six plain old little screws. That's all it is. Okay. And when I do this, when I take this apart and show you you're going to see what the problem is you're going to see why the headphone is having the problems that it's having at least i'm convinced it is the reason why so here's the plate once again screws are out all i gotta do is just kind of tilt it and the whole thing comes out there you go you see how the driver is connected to the plate and it just got these cables connecting to the connectors now look at that inside now it might not be super obvious as to what the problem is. If you don't, if you're not familiar with the construction of headphones, this might not look that odd to you. But what this is inside here is just a gigantic empty metal bowl. That's all that's in here. This driver sits flat against this bowl and behind it is nothing but solid milled aluminum. Okay, with absolutely no dampening. So the problem with this headphone is that there has, there was absolutely zero attempt at tuning it. Okay, that's what happened to this headphone. It's like they forgot. They forgot one of the most crucial parts of building a headphone. You got to tune it. You can't just have... Uh, a, a, a basic chassis and a basic driver or slap them together and make it go. You do that, you're going to have problems, just like it's experiencing. You have to tune it, because at the moment, what's happening is that the sound is just bouncing around in here without any control at all. It's bouncing off the walls, off the back, going all over the place before it gets to my ear. Not good. Not good at all. And it's partially why it sounds like a freaking clamshell on my ear. Because look at all this empty space of nothing. So no wonder it sounds like a clamshell over my ear. They forgot to tune the damn thing. That I'm convinced that's the problem. They forgot to do some dampening in here to help tune it. 
you can't just have a metal bowl. Sound reflects. Sound reflects off of solid surfaces and sound especially reflects off of just plain bare metal. Duh. Okay. <laughs> so, how do we fix this? Well, it's actually a lot easier than you think. The fix, I'm going to show you the the cost, the zero cost fix to this. You've undone you've you've taken the plate off, you've unscrewed it. Now all you got to do is fill in that void. Fill in that freaking clamshell with this. Some freaking toilet paper. That's all it needs. I have some Charmin Ultra Soft over here. I'm going to take uh, let's do one, two, three, four squares. Four squares of Charmin. I'm going to divide that into two. Okay? I got two squares of Charmin on either side. I'm going to fold it. I'm going to fold again. I'm going to now line the back side and the wall a little bit with the toilet paper. I'm going to, I'm going to do this myself, and then I'll show you what I've done. So I'm just going to kind of shove it in there, just like that. Nope, oh, not showing on, on the screen there. There you go. Look at that. It's just in there. Okay? I'm going to take my other bit of Charmin Ultra Soft toilet paper, fold it in half, fold it in half again, and then do the other side. And it should end up looking kind of like this. Okay? That's all I did. I just kind of lined the inside with toilet paper because toilet paper isn't metal and doesn't reflect sound the same way. It dampens it. It's a dampening material, okay? That's all you gotta freaking do. So now that that's in there, you screw this back together, pop it back in, you're gonna be golden. You're gonna be golden and we'll talk about it. But let's say you want to take it a step further. Hey, Spooky Abby, how's it going? Welcome in. Toilet paper for your farts, yes. Toilet paper for Spooky Abby's farts, of course. <laughs> okay, so yeah. Just a little bit of dampening is all that needs to happen in there. Okay, you can do it like I did. Just throw some toilet paper in there. Just so that it's not bouncing off of just a solid metal back. But if you want to take it a step further, I also have this like polyfill. This is You can get uh, like a huge bag of this on Amazon for just a couple, like 10 bucks or something like that. Polyfill, okay? It's like the kind of stuff you would stuff like stuff animals with, but you can also stuff like speakers with it and that kind of thing. So I'm taking a step further and I'm going to put some polyfill in there. So let's do that. I'm going to take out my toilet paper because toilet paper does a great job, but I got the polyfill, so I'm going to use the polyfill. It's essentially the same, but now rather than just having the back of the uh, hull of the shell being a damp, uh, dampening the sound a little bit. Now I got it all filled up. Okay. This is what you would do with a regular speaker. All right. So now it is not going to let any sound bounce around freely. The problem, the only problem you get with the polyfill is that getting it to like all snug in there without getting a little bit kind of leaking out the side is a little bit of a pain, but your pads are probably going to cover that up anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. It looks tasty. <laughs> yeah. Got like a cotton candy situation going on there. I see it. I get you. I get you, Kingly. I'm on, I'm on board with that. Uh, something that I didn't mention earlier before we did this mod is uh, soundstage and imaging on the the headphone stock. So the sound stage was all right, but not great. It, uh, it was actually kind of narrow. It had, it's a little strange because it does have this, you know, really shallow feel to it, um, which might, because the way that the bass is so emphasized compared to everything else it almost sounds like it's bigger than it is but the actual sound stage is not not that great and the imaging like i said everything sounds like it's just mushed together almost in mono sound so you get like no imaging so that was what was in the stock so there we go i have build 
I filled the driver up with, with freaking polyfill. I'm gonna, once again, hold the cup with my left hand. With my right hand, I'm going to align these little nubs in their in their in their slots till it kind of there it goes. Yeah, it kind of pops in there. And then I'm gonna turn it, holding the side clockwise. Just a little turn makes it snug. There. Now it's in there. You can't hear this. The mic's not going to pick it up. But there's already a notable difference in the sound of the headphone. I tap this. It sounds kind of solid. Not like a hunk of metal. But it sounds like there's some effort in like something happening inside. On this side, totally hollow. <laughs> so, let's repeat the process. All right, same deal. There's your plate. It just pops off. And then once again, absolutely nothing inside. No attempt at tuning whatsoever. So if they're not going to do the tuning, I'll do it for them. Grab another handful of polyfill. It is literally just a handful. That's all I'm using. Just enough to fill the bowl. But again, if you don't want to bother with buying polyfill, just use toilet paper. It worked just as well, really. I'm just being a little extra, that's all. Okay, stuffing it in there, just like so. And I'm popping this bad boy back on. Pull away some of these little strands, just clean up a little bit. There we go. Screw it back on. So we're going to listen to the same tracks again. And we're going to see exactly what has changed. Have we... Have we freed the poor, innocent female Japanese singer from her metal confinement? Have we separated those string instruments from each other so they can actually be identified and enjoyed? <laughs> Have we given maybe some soundstage and imaging to what was before just kind of a muddy mess? Let's find out. Done. Pop the pad back on again, holding the cup in my left hand, right hand. Just get the cup to kind of align in there until it drops in. Once it drops in, clockwise turn. Now it's snug. And you're done. Mod, done. That's all you had to do. That's it. Didn't even have to bother dealing with these holes or whatever. It's done. There's the mod. So now, that clamshell problem we had before, I put these on. It's gone. I don't hear a clamshell anymore. I don't hear the ocean anymore. Now it just kind of sounds like a regular clothes back on my head. That's a good sign. Let's go back to that uh, Copied City track, and we're going to listen to that. The Pay attention to the pianos, and we're going to pay attention to that vocalist again. Starting from the beginning. That piano sounds beautiful. It sounds bright. It sounds shimmery and shiny. It sounds like it's got some sparkle to it. I could hear it not just in the high end, but I could also hear it kind of ripple down into like its lower strings. I hear it. I hear the piano. I can finally hear the piano again. There it is. That cello has presence. It is deep. It resonates. It has power behind it. And it sounds like a vibrating acoustic instrument. <laughs> and it's, it's like it's behind me. I almost feel it like it's behind me and it's engulfing me in this vibration of those big thick strings. And the violins are separate from the freaking cello. They are bright and beautiful and lovely and velvety and they are just like dancing around me. One more time. And that piano is still front and center. I still hear the piano. Before, we couldn't hear the piano at all at this point. But it is clear, 
crystal clear to me now. Ah, there she is. She's free. She's been set loose. We've we've kicked down the freaking metal door and she has come out and she's singing like she's finally free from her confinement. Oh my god, she sounds beautiful. She's front and center. She is so clear. It's like I hear like a ringing, a ringing from her voice. Not like a sibilance, but just like this beautiful trebling ring. It's so lovely. All right. Here comes the, the high note. And there's a piano. I couldn't hear that piano at all at that point, and there it is. She finally can breathe. She's finally out there. Her voice is huge and angelic. It's just beautiful. It's beautiful. It's such a huge, humongous difference. I have treble detail. I have instrument separation. I have... I have texture. And timbre, a little bit of timbre's in there too. Ooh, okay, let's go back to that first track that we listened to. Uh, where are you? Memories of Dust. Now we can pay attention more to the bass range. See how, how, because it has impacted the bass. Let's see what it did. Okay, so right off the gate, the bass is not as present as it was before. We have controlled the bass range. The bass was a lot more impactful before the mod. It was bigger, kind of boomier, but it also modified. It was engulfing everything. Now, it's not like the bass is gone. The bass is still there, but now it's controlled. It's staying in its range. And we're actually getting more sub bass. The bass is able to kind of reach further down in its frequency range to where it's supposed to be able to reach. It's not trying to engulf and ensnare and entrap the mid range anymore. It's on its own and it's more detailed. And it, it just, it, it, it sounds so much more natural. It sounds lovely. And then Right there, that little, little, little thing. I could barely hear that th those chimes before. They were there, but they were so, so freaking crushed down and uh, just swallowed up by a muddy mid-range. It was really hard to really enjoy them. Now it's it's a sparkle. There is a bass range, and then it just sh -sh 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 it shimmers and sparkles, and it's exactly what it's supposed to sound like. It's beautiful. Yes, that's how it should be. And now that, uh, someone help me out here. It's not the shamisen. Shamisen is the Japanese instrument. What is the Middle Eastern instrument that's like that little string guitar thing that's not a guitar? Whatever that is, I can hear it now. And I hear the plucks. Sitar, thank you. Oh my God, Game Doc. I was, I knew, I knew it would be Game Doc. I knew it. I knew you'd be the one to figure it out. Thank you so much. Yes, a sitar. It actually sounds like a sitar now. It actually sounds like a string instrument. I can hear the strings vibrating. I can hear the plucking of the instrument and I can hear it separate from everything else. Yeah, that realm. God. She's 
she no longer sounds like she's singing into a tin can. She sounds like she's in the room with me. She sounds like she is front and center, vocal forward. She's crystal clear. She has dynamics in her voice. She has texture in her voice. She has timbre. She has resonance. And I could hear the strings of that sitar just like the the the, the like bass strings of it just going. And I hear it vibrating, and it's this is I think how the headphone was meant to be. This is how this headphone was meant to be. And I think they just forgot to do it. I think that they forgot to finish the headphone. I think that they built this thing and they just didn't finish it. I'm convinced at that because it's so nice. It's so nice. It sounds great now. And all it took was a little bit of dampening. All it took was making it so that the sound wasn't freely bouncing around in a metal shell. Because now it sounds good it sounds good it went from something that sounded bad bad b-a-d capital b-a-d now it sounds good so now it is a headphone i can recommend it is a headphone like i can now recommend if you are ready to do just this very simple mod at msrp these are a 120 dollars headphone i still don't think they're worth 120 dollars i don't but i got them on sale for 60 bucks and now with this mod a 60 dollars close back Hell yes. These sound great now for a $60 closeback headphone. Absolutely. They are such a shame. <laughs> like, it... when you look at the, the inside of these things and you see the way that they're kind of milled down in those cups and there's like almost like a sticky... It almost looks like it almost looks like they were gonna do it. It almost looks like they were they were intending to like stick some freaking acoustic foam in there or something. It looks like they like had maybe some at one point a little bit of glue in there to glue something in, but they just never did. Cause that was the fix, man. Cause now these sound great. These sound excellent. And all it took was that real simple mod. Again, though, you don't want to worry the polyfill. Toilet paper, really, does almost exactly the same thing. I I do feel like I get just a little bit more uh, of a natural sound with the full poly um, polyfill, but the toilet paper itself helps significantly. Significantly, we're talking like you're gonna get I don't know ninety five percent of the listening experience that I'm getting right now if you use the toilet paper. You want that extra 5%? Go with the polyfill. The Blonde B50, B50s. A unfinished headphone, I'm convinced. Unfinished. Needs tuning. And just throwing some shit in the can is all it really needs to have a little bit of tuning. Control it a little bit so it's not bouncing off of that metal and it sounds great.